Cast all of your old-fashioned ideas aside, like gangsters and drug wars, and you'll find that Colombia is a nation full with confidence and rushing headfirst into a more pleasant, peaceful, and prosperous future. In this land of contrasts, you'll encounter snow-capped Andean peaks, tropical Amazonian jungles, turquoise Caribbean coasts, and two sun-kissed deserts. You'll also find a host of spectacular attractions at the places in between, from the magic of Cartagena and the buzz of Medellin to the quiet, colonial villages of Salento and Mompox. Above all else, the famous Colombian hospitality will undoubtedly find you coming back for more. Find the best places to visit with our list of the top attractions in Colombia. To get the most out of your travel experience in this beautiful country, be sure to watch our video of best places to visit in Colombia. Before we get started, make sure you have subscribed our YouTube channel and click the bell icon so that you can get new upcoming videos. Number 1. Cartagena. Cartagena is the crown jewel of Colombia's Caribbean coast and one of the best preserved colonial destinations in the Americas. Take a stroll through the historic walled city and you may feel as if you've stepped back in time to a different era. Maybe it's the 13 kilometers of centuries old walls or the colorful colonial architecture many of which are now beautifully restored restaurants and luxury hotels. Perhaps it's the Balganvillia covered balconies along the labyrinthine streets or the soaring Catholic churches that tower above every plaza. Whatever it is, visitors can't help but fall for this Caribbean charmer. Beyond the old city center lies laid back get some money, and along the ocean front is Baca Grande, a newer part of town, where upscale condos and hotels fight for prime seafront real estate, and less than an hour away by boat are islands and beaches offering ideal getaways and day trips. Number 2. Medellin. Bogota might be the Colombian capital, but it's the smaller and more manageable city of Medellin that tends to capture the hearts of visitors. Medellin was dubbed the most dangerous city in the world in the early 1990s, but a quarter of a century later, it has earned a reputation for something entirely different innovation. The city boasts cable cars linking the settlements in its hills to a modern metro system in the valley below, a green book of lush eco parks and striking libraries and community centers in some of the poorest neighborhoods. A great day of sightseeing in Medellin might start in the old quarter at Botero Plaza, where you'll find a collection of 23 portly sculptures donated by the beloved Colombian artist Fernando Botero. Adjacent to the plaza is the must-visit Museum of Antioquia and the striking Rafael Uribe Uribe Palace of Culture. Then, head into the hills above town by riding the sleek escalator system through Camula 13 to explore this neighborhood's colorful homes and elaborate street murals. Finish your day in Medellin's trendiest commune El Poblado, where you'll find buzzing eateries, boutique shops, and the vast majority of the city's hotels. Number 3. Eje Cafetero The world's third largest producer of coffee beans, Colombia is a fantastic country for tastings and tours. The vast majority of production takes place in the subtropical Andean hills west of Bogota between the small cities of Armenia, Pereira, and Manizales. This region, known as the Eje Cafetero or Coffee Axis, is home to a growing number of coffee plantations that have opened up their operations to the public in recent years for tours, tastings, and lavish farm stays. These small and often organic plantations are the kind of places where the farmer owner might take an hour out of his day to explain the process of how a humble cherry turns into a coffee bean that will one day be roasted and ground into a latte back home. The small resort town of Salento is easily the most attractive place to base yourself with numerous farm tours nearby and plenty of things to do. you also have easy access to attractions like Kakor Valley, home to the tallest palm trees in the world. You can rent bicycles from Salento to explore the region under your own steam or ride on one of the old-fashioned woolly jeeps that serve as the town's de facto taxis. Number 4. Ledisha Picture the Amazon and Colombia may not be the first country to come to mind, which is odd, because about a third of the nation is blanketed in its thick jungles. The capital of the vast Amazon basin is the small frontier town of Ledisha which sits along the banks of the mighty Amazon River, right where Colombia bumps up against Brazil and Peru. Ledisha makes a great base for ecotourism, wildlife safaris, or hikes into the Amazon to learn about the indigenous tribes that call this area home. The only way to arrive here is by playing from Bogota, and you can continue onward by boat either downriver to Manaus, Brazil, or upriver to Iquitos, Peru. Number 5. Tirona National Natural Park 
you'll find some of the best beaches in Colombia within the protected Tayrona National Natural Park, which is known for its palm-shaded coves and crystal-clear coastal lagoons. Most beaches are set against the dramatic mountains of the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, whose rainforested hills make for a great side trip on any beach vacation. Tiroma is also a fantastic place for snorkeling at protected areas near La Piscina Beach and Cabo San Juan. Though remote, these secluded beaches aren't exactly a secret, so it's best to visit in low season February to November to avoid the massive crowds. Also, unless you're paying for the lavish Echo Habs Tiroma, be prepared to sleep in a tent at one of the many beachside campgrounds. Number 6. Bogota. Most visitors to Colombia will inevitably begin their trip in the nation's largest city and beating heart, Bogota. It's a city that often divides opinion, with some complaining of its gridlocked streets and dreary weather and others falling head over heels for its unique combination of colonial charm and urban sophistication. Either way, this city of 8 million tends to grow on people who give it enough time. Begin your sightseeing in the historic center of La Candelaria where you'll find the impressive buildings lining Plaza de Bolivar and can't miss cultural attractions like the blindingly bright Museum of Gold. Then, head over to the wealthier neighborhoods of North Bogota for some of the nation's best boutique shops and chef-driven restaurants. Number 7. The Lost City Colombia's most popular hike is undoubtedly the four-day, 44-kilometer trek to Ciudad Perdida, a lost city hidden deep in the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains that was only rediscovered in the 1970s. Built and occupied by Tayroni Indians between the 8th and 14th centuries, this historic city is said to be one of the largest pre-Columbian settlements discovered in the Americas. Much of the site remains buried beneath the thick jungle quilt. The modern indigenous inhabitants of the area have banned excavations, but you'll find that the stone terraces and stairways are in outstanding shape. Independent tracks are not allowed. You will need to go with a sanctioned and approved tour operator who will provide a guide and all meals. You can book a tour from Santa Marta in advance. If you decide to go, be prepared. This is no walk in the park. You'll face blazing heat, stifling humidity, rainstorms, copious quantities of mud, and insects. The trail, although easy to follow, is never flat. Plan to always be going up or down. However, it's not all drudgery. Along the way, you'll be treated to spectacular jungle views and the opportunity to swim in rivers and ponds. Hikes start early, usually around 5 a.m. to make use of the coolest part of the day. At the designated campgrounds, you'll either sleep in a hammock or on a mattress. Mosquito nets are provided. You should count on being able to walk about 12 to 14 kilometers or 7 to 9 hours in a single session. The trail is closed every September as part of an agreement with the local indigenous community. The best time to go with the least rain is January and February. Number 8. Providence Island. This quirky Caribbean island leaves many first-time visitors perplexed. For starters, it's far closer to Nicaragua than Colombia. Then there's the fact that its residents don't speak Spanish but rather an English Creole. Of course, none of that really matters when you find yourself sunning on the most stunning beaches under the Colombian flag. Little more than a dollop of golden sands and perky palms. This isolated island is the jewel of the UNESCO Protected Sea Flower Biosphere Reserve with some of the world's greatest marine biodiversity just waiting to be explored. You'll need to first stop on the more popular San Andres Island and catch a short hopper plane or three-hour catamaran ride to reach Providencia. Once here, you'll find the largest collection of cottages and hotels in the small hamlet of Aguados on the stunning west coast of the island. Number 9. La Guajira Peninsula It's the most northerly point in South America, so perhaps it's only fitting that La Guajira is unlike anywhere else on the continent. This remote and little-visited peninsula is a quiet oasis of sweeping sand dunes covered mangrove swamps and vast stretches of empty land where the orange-brown Laguajir Desert meets the turquoise Caribbean Sea. Indigenous beliefs are the law of the land here, as the peninsula is home to the proud Wayu people, who were never subjugated under Spanish rule and maintain a vibrant culture to this day. Keep in mind that tourism is still new in La Guajira, and the ride in from the regional capital of Rio Hacha requires both patience and a sense of adventure. The windsurfing mecca of Cabo de la Vela has the most tourism infrastructure and will likely be your best entry point into the region.
Number 10. Connell Christales Connell Christales was off limits for decades while in the grip of guerrilla fighters but is officially back in business and welcoming more tourists than ever before. Most visitors come to this remote river canyon in the Ornacuya region to hike between its waterfalls and bathe in its natural swimming holes. While worth the trip in any season, the canyon is particularly prismatic between July and November when an algae bloom turns the riverbed into a rainbow of colors. The isolated outpost of La Macarena is your base for trips to Cano Cristales, and it's only reachable by air from Bogota or Villa Vicencio. Number 11. Mombox. Lovers of magic realism and the writings of Gabriel Garcia Marquez will fall for the sleepy charms of Mompox. It features prominently in the Nobel laureate's book The General in his labyrinth and is thought to be the inspiration for the fictional town of Macondo in his most famous novel, 100 Years of Solitude. Mompox was once a prosperous cog in the trading route between the Caribbean coast and the Andes, famed as the spot where Il Libertador Simon Bolivar recruited his army to gain independence for neighboring Venezuela. Now, this colonial relic along the muddy shores of the Magdalena River is truly a town that time forgot. Though it lacks a wealth of things to do, many visitors find themselves spending far longer than planned strolling through the cobbled streets, soaking in the ambience of the colonial architecture, or taking boat trips through the Pagino Swamp, a popular attraction for birders.